World of Warcraft has become infamous for its massive amount of cosmetics. In this list, we're going to be going over the rarest mounts in the entire game. The list, however, will not include unobtainable mounts like Gladiator PvP mounts, TCG, or BlizzCon exclusive type mounts. This list will only be going over mounts you can still obtain and how rare they are in terms of drop chance. Difficulty will also be measured, as a mount added in a new patch will technically be the rarest in the game, but only because it was just released and no one has it. To start us off at number 10, we have the Dark Moon Dirigible mount from the Dark Moon Fair. This mount was added in patch 7.3 of Legion and would cost players 1,000 Dark Moon tickets. The Dark Moon Fair is a monthly event that occurs on the first weekend of every new month and persists for a week, then vanishes until the next month, repeating this all year round. During the time the fair is up, players can complete daily activities and participate in fun, more non-traditional WoW quests. Completing these activities would reward the player with Dark Moon prize tickets, which can be exchanged for many items like heirloom upgrades, cosmetic transmogs, and the Dark Moon dirigible itself. The farm itself isn't very complicated, it only requires you to be attentive at the times of the month and completing each available activity as much as possible on one character, as the tickets are not account-wide. Once you cough up exactly 1,000 total tickets, you can turn them into a vendor named Lahara and you can learn your mount. The unique thing about this mount, outside of its method of obtaining it, is there are not any mounts that share its look, and is the only real Zeppelin mount outside of the BFA promotional mounts. And at number 9, we have the Liberated Silvered mount. This mount was added in Dragonflight and released from a rare NPC called Breezebiter. This rare typically has a spawn rate of 1-2 to two hours, sometimes more, and when killed can potentially drop the mount it rides. The rate at which this mount drops has been pretty inconsistent even after a year of Dragonflight nearly. This mount still only has a collection rate less than 1% across all WoW accounts, according to data for Azeroth. Players report this mount reaching the hundreds range in terms of attempts, and like most rare NPC drops, depending on your RNG, determines how long a grind can be. The unique thing about this mount, however, is that if it drops, it has the ability to actually be traded to players who killed it with you. This means that if you got a group of friends to farm it with you, or in some old WoW accounts to spare, you could farm it across multiple people for more attempts per kill, and just trade them out to the person that needs it next. To further speed this up, you can just not learn the mount as well, help it in being eligible to loot it a second time for a bonus, and then trade it before you learned your own, if you wanted to farm it with a group of friends. I did say newer mounts wouldn't really count on this list, but with the collection rate being one of the lowest in the game, contending with other entries further down this list, even after a year of it existing, earns it a spot on this list anyway. And at number 8, we have the Ivory Hawkstrider mount, added in patch 7.1 of Legion. This mount would be a slightly different recolor of the infamous Swift White Hawkstrider mount from Kel'Thas Sunstrider in the Magister's Terrace dungeon. To unlock the vendor that sells you this mount, you must kill the Falcosaur Matriarchs during a Falcosaur Swarm world quest anywhere in the Legion zone. A mob called Orphan Falcosaur will eventually spawn and you can lure it with food. It will then become a battle pet for you and summon it will offer you a series of daily quests you must complete that will make it stronger and eventually grow into a mount version you can ride. There are four versions of these mounts, but you only need to unlock one, and once you do so, you will approach Aviana and High Mountain while atop the mount, and she will now have an extra dialogue option for you to click. Doing this will unlock the Talon's Vengeance reputation NPC Trinket next to Aviana. From now on, Trinket will always be available to you and offer you the Ivory Hawkstrider mount at Exalted for 10,000 gold. Basically, to grind out this reputation, you must do a lot of PvP. Trinket will have two unique items called the Ivory Talon and Ivory Feather, and when used, they will enable you to earn Marks of Prey when slain enemy players in PvP. Each mark will offer you 100 reputation with Talon's Vengeance. Doing some math, this roughly translates to 420 killing blows in PvP, not honorable kills. It's worth noting that these marks also work with rep buff bonuses, like the Darkman Fair, meaning you can save them until the fair comes around and get more rep and require less kills. This mount was technically a secret mount, as obtaining it requires extra steps that can only be completed through a hidden reputation that is only unlocked through a small series of steps. Because of this, many people do not know this mount actually exists in the game, or understand its method in being obtained, creating an incredibly low completion rate. And at number 7, we have the Soaring Spelltone mount. This mount was added in patch 9.1.5 in Shadowlands with the return of the Mage Tower, originally added in Legion 7.2 patch. The Mage Tower was a scenario with the purpose of challenging every limit your class and spec has, and seeing if you have essentially mastered the playstyle of your class. The challenges all depend on your current role and spec, so tanks, no matter the class, all have the same challenge as it was designed for the role of tanking. This also applies for healers. The Mage Tower is available for players 24-7 and can be attempted at any point. Obtaining the Spell Tome requires you complete all seven unique challenges, needing multiple alt characters. Depending on the current expansion scaling, this challenge could be relatively simple for more knowledgeable veteran players. 
There can also be times when this scaling is considered harder than it was originally in the game, which can create much more difficult experiences for players. Because a very large chunk of players are pretty casual, this mount has an incredibly low collection rate. Even for more learned players, the challenges can still prove difficult because it will need you to learn other classes and how they work in order to complete them. With the most able to be done on the character is a druid because they have four specs. Your class could also just have a harder time to actually do the challenge compared to other classes due to how the scenarios were made. For example, doing the tank scenario on a demon hunter is miles easier than doing it on a paladin because one of the biggest threats of the challenge is being knocked off the platform and dying immediately. When a demon hunter can just glide back safely, it removes loads of difficulty away from the challenge and earns them the portion of the achievement much easier. The A Tour of Towers achievement will be given to you once you complete every unique challenge along with the mount, and you will have officially earned bragging rights. And at number 6, we have the Moss Sworn Soul Hunter. This mount was added on the release of Shadowlands as a rare drop from the Gorge Shadehound in the Maw. Within the Maw, there will be a rotation of four world events called Hunts in the Beastwarns location of the zone. These hunts would rotate with each other every 3.5 days, meaning two a week, and only one would spawn the necessary rare. In the Hunt Shadehounds event, the Gorge Shadehound can be spawned on a relatively forgiving spawn timer, depending on your server, and when killed can potentially drop itself as a mount. What makes farming this mount so annoying is that it can only be killed once every day that the hunt is up on that character, and you must then wait for it to rotate back in. This means that you could only get 26 attempts a year on this mount, and can be multiplied for every alt character you have that's able to journey to the maw and locate the rare. Because Shadowlands is also over, a method that was formerly used to get quicker attempts was Realm Hopping. Realm Hopping basically lets you change phases when you get invited by a player on a different server in the same zone as you. So if another server had the rare up and would invite you while you waited for yours to spawn, it would then show up and give your character its attempt. Without the method of Realm Hopping, as the maw has much died down in player density, it makes obtaining the mount take much longer. To add on to this, it may also occasionally completely bug out. When the rare hits 50% health, it will run away deeper into the cave that you're fighting it in and sometimes get stuck in the wall, evading every attack you make on it until it eventually despawns because the game thinks no one is engaging with it, ruining your attempt on that tune. With all these problems in farming the mount in mind, it has an incredibly low number of players that wish to farm it and actually have it. And at number 5, we have the Bloodfang Widow, added at the beginning of Legion with the Mad Merchant NPC. This mount isn't incredibly extreme in terms of steps to grind it out, other than just requiring you to have lots of gold. All you need to obtain this mount is a total of 2 million gold, and it's all yours. There's no reputations or secrets to this mount existence, other than just requiring a lot of your hard-earned money. To some, 2 million gold is nothing at all. To others, this mount can be an insanely long grind on them, because they cannot understand the economy of gold sometimes. It really just depends on the kind of player you are when it comes to this mount being one of the few spider mounts in the game, and was also the only one for a long time. Some players may elect to just farm materials and sell them on the auction house, selling green items in large open world farms, or boosting people through tough PvE slash PvP content. Or you can just buy WoW tokens. Once you obtain your 2 million gold and are ready to purchase the mount, you must head to Dalaran and Legion and find the Mad Merchant. He appears as a gnome with a yellow robe and tall wizard hat, and will say in the yell chat, Sparkles, Fizzles, Whiz Bangs, Ahoy. The music in Dalaran will also change to a more circus theme sound, showing that he's up. His spawn time is very random, it can go days without showing up on some servers. But once he's up, he'll remain spawned for about an hour. At this time, you can just walk up to him and buy the spider for the 2 million gold you've obtained, and learn your new mount. Because of the costly effort this mount introduces, and some players have never even hit above 200,000 gold at a single time, it earns to spawn this list, but it's still relatively simple in earning. Even after 7 years of it existing, the mount still only has a less than 2% collection rate. It just depends on what kind of player you are. And at number 4, we have the world boss mounts from the respective expansions. This is the only entry on this list with multiple mounts tied together, as they are all incredibly similar in the method of obtaining and drop chance. Together, we have the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent from the Shah of Anger, Thundering Cobalt Cloud Serpent from Nalak, Cobalt Primordial Direhorn from Undasta, Son of Galleon from Galleon, Solar Spire Hawk from Rukmar, and Molly from the Dune Gorger Krolok. To farm these mounts, you would need to go to the boss's respective zones, locate them, and kill them. Once killed, they have a very low chance of rewarding you with their mount. The world bosses typically have a spawn timer of about 15 to 30 minutes, and because realm hopping isn't the most effective way to farm these bosses, even when you reach the boss you need and are ready to get your attempt in, the boss might not even be alive and you'd be forced to sit and wait. Some players would actually reach the thousands in terms of attempts, and Blizzard would fortunately add a hotfix that increased the drop chance of these mounts, as a farm that has players stuck for over half a decade is clearly unfun for any party involved with it. Regardless of his increase, however, the drop rate remains low, and the collection rate of all of these mounts is in the less than 3% range across all WoW accounts. 
And at number 3, we have the Zareth Overseer. This mount would potentially drop for players upon the defeat of the Jailer encounter and Sepler of the first ones, and only on the Mythic difficulty. Due to the mount's restrictions in farming and age at the time of the script, Dragonflight 10.1.7, you are forced into asking other players for helping you in getting attempts in. Because this raid is not super old still, and with how scaling works, many players need a skilled and geared group of 10 to 20 people to bring him down efficiently. The Jailer was the final boss of the Shallons expansion and even now has both deadly mechanics and is no pushover to many groups. The Zareth Overseer is said to be a 1% drop chance mount, but you will find the most difficulty in getting a competent group together to actually defeat the encounter. Players have a tendency to join legacy content and expect an overall face roll of content as they mash random buttons and expect the boss to drop dead and give them what they want. In the Jailer's case, you still have to try, at the dismay of a lot of collectors. During phase 1 of the encounter, the boss will occasionally attempt to mind control the entire raid with a relentless domination, and it must be line of sighting with the pillars that are created by players. These pillars come from marked players of Rune of Damnation and will be dropped into empty pits around the room and shoot players back onto the platform and a pillar to LOS. Lots of people who collect don't have time nor really want to commit the effort for learning old content because that's not what they're there for. So when it comes to having to actually understand fundamental mechanics, they may just leave altogether or wipe your group at failing to do what is asked. This can result in many wipes or just failed attempts for the week overall. Even if you manage to kill him, you still only have a 1% chance to get the mount, and will likely need to repeat this process multiple times if you wish to farm across other characters, which can prove difficult as, like mentioned, you may spend more time just forming and gathering players who actually wish to help you. For our second to last entry on this list, we have the X-45 Heartbreaker, formerly known as the Big Love Rocket. The Heartbreaker is a holiday mount added as the real-world counterpart of Valentine's Day. You can queue your character for the dungeon and will receive a heart-shaped box that will contain the mount within. This event can only be farmed for a few weeks in the year and will then vanish until February rolls around once again in a full year. The dungeon can be farmed once a day for every character and has the benefit of a larger drop chance for your first run of the day, encouraging more players to get at least one attempt for the day in while the event runs. The drop rate of the buffed first daily run is unknown, but the runs after this are supposed to have a 1 in 3000 chance, or 0.03% chance. Obviously, this seems almost impossible to occur, and even since it was added in Wrath of the Lich King in 3.3, the mount still sees an obtain rate of less than 4%. It has only been one year since they added the buff, and more people definitely received the mount than before, so over time, this number will increase. Even the most dedicated collectors, nearing 900 mounts, still do not have this mount. With such a really low drop chance and only a few weeks out of the year when it's available, it's become known as one of the rarest mounts in the entire game's history. Our final entry in this list is the prestigious Bloodforged Courser. This mount has a simple grind requiring the player to reach a total honor level of 500 in their account. All it takes is completing PvP content in any scenario it exists and you will earn progression towards this mount. However, the level 500 for PvP is so astronomically high that even incredibly dedicated PvP players who do nothing but PvP do not have this mount. Honor is both a currency used to purchase PvP gear, but in this system, it's a level on your account that shows your prestige and commitment to the activity. Each level requires 10,000 honor total, and how much you net per win depends on the type of content you're participating in, but will be PvP regardless. To put into perspective how few players actually have this mount, even with the grind allowing account-wide progression and never losing honor, it rivals even Gladiator and TCG mounts. Gladiator mounts can only be obtained by achieving 50 wins at above 2400 rating in 3v3s. And before this method of mount was added in, you had to be in the top 1% of players in the entire bracket of PvP. TCG mounts have all been removed and generally can cost players thousands of dollars for their worth nowadays. But this mount, which can be achieved entirely in-game, has a collection rate of a terrifying 0.58% across accounts. Players that obtain this mount have also been known to abuse and exploit in farming honor when it was added, creating a slightly non-artificial earning of this achievement. This means that players who earn this legitimately and without a bug is even lower than the mentioned percentage. If you see someone on this mount, you know for sure they are incredibly patient and committed. And that's all the rarest mounts in the game. WoW has had such an insane amount of mounts for players to collect and many of the rarest are just completely unavailable, but everything on this list is still 100% achievable by any player who watches the video.